Hey Hey everyone, everyone. we're Nick and Rachel. If you haven't been following our adventures over the past year, you'll typically find us traveling around the world vlogging those experiences. But today's video is going to be a little bit different because in each of the countries that we visited, we've noticed something a little bit different that we're not accustomed to back home in Canada and the UK. The reason that we have this channel is not just for the sake of sharing our own experiences, but also in the hopes of trying to inspire others. But we do completely accept that we do go to certain countries that maybe people haven't thought about, haven't done a lot of research about, or are maybe just feeling a little bit unprepared for even if it's on their itinerary. So therefore, we want to make these tips and tricks videos for you so that you feel better equipped with the information that you need to know before you go. Today's video is going to focus on traveling through the Philippines. If you've been watching our videos, you'll know that while we were in the Philippines, we went to Coron, El Nido, Mobul, Bohol, and Shargao. And we also had some pretty long connections along the way. In today's video, we're going to give you a few pointers that are specific to each of those cities, but a lot of the tips and tricks are going to be about the country as a whole. We hope that you find them all useful. The Philippines is a country that runs pretty much exclusively on cash to get anything done anywhere. So you are definitely going to make sure that you got pesos on you at pretty much all times. While there are generally a number of ATMs that you can use wherever you are, just bear in mind that a lot of them are part of the Euronet network. Because of the fact that Euronet is not affiliated with any bank, then they do set additional fees which are a lot higher than bank ATMs would charge for you to withdraw your money. So if you are going to be using an ATM, try your best to look out for ones that are associated with Filipino banks rather than ones that are Euronet affiliated where possible. The bank branches may be a little bit harder to find, but the savings that you get will be worth it. Water in the Philippines is not potable, which means that you cannot drink the tap water, nor can you brush your teeth with the tap water. So you're gonna need to use bottled water. Fortunately, like in many other countries, bottled water is very affordable. The other thing is that in restaurants, as well as at your accommodation, it's very common for them to have filtered water in a water cooler, and that's something that they generally provide free of charge. Unlike some other countries in this part of the world, then generally speaking, there are no Western style supermarkets that you can take advantage of. You will find that there may be things that advertise themselves as supermarkets, or there may be convenience stores, but a lot of these will be confined to just dry goods and drinks. In order to get fresh produce, then you will have to look out for market stores or very much specific green grocers, but they may be a little bit harder to find than you'd expect. If you're traveling on a budget like we were, then look out for the small local eateries and restaurants because they are most affordable and they also provide the perfect opportunity to try traditional Filipino food, which is absolutely delicious. So some of the Filipino dishes that we recommend are pancit canton and pancit bohon. Any type of silog for breakfast, we had this multiple times and cannot speak highly enough of this. Actually, all the food. Just try all the Filipino food. It's so good. So moving on from silog, also, definitely also try sisig, kinalao, which is pretty much the Filipino version of ceviche, and also adobo. We cannot reiterate how delicious Filipino food is, and if you go to the local eateries and restaurants, it is definitely the most affordable option compared to any restaurant that is geared toward tourists. In our opinion, we like to experience local and authentic cuisine as much as possible when you're traveling. While the general day-to-day -day of being in the Philippines is pretty affordable, the downside is that when you do go there, you're generally going to want to fly around or boat around to various different islands as there are thousands of them that you can explore. The downside though is that when it comes to transporting yourself to each of the islands, then it can be a little bit more expensive than you'd expect. Generally speaking, for us to fly from one island to the other, then you were looking at at least 75 Canadian dollars per person to get from one to the other on a Filipino internal flight. In certain cases, especially for the less 
visited islands, then it can go into triple figures and can be actually far more expensive than you first imagined. So that is something to consider. Equally, ferries end up usually costing just a little bit under that $75 mark, but they can still be pretty expensive on a per person basis. In our experience, going from Quran to El Nido was 53 euros per person, because that was what it was quoted as. Going from Arslav, which is on the same island as Malbal, to get to Bohol, only costs us 17 per person. Irrespective though, it's definitely a good idea to not necessarily fly by the seat of your pants, but instead try and do as much research as you can on the most cost-effective way to complete your Filipino itinerary would be, based on the transfers between each of the islands you want to go to, because if you're not careful, you may get some unexpectedly high costs. Once you've arrived to your destination, the question is, how do you explore that particular area? And we found that renting a scooter was the most cost-effective way to do that. Scooter rentals should cost no more than 400 pesos or about 10 Canadian dollars. However, we paid about 350 pesos per day. So there is definitely room to negotiate. You can generally try to rent a scooter just by walking through town. There are many shops and stores that offer this service and they will definitely try to charge you more, but the expectation is that you bargain with them and find a happy meeting place. The alternative is that a lot of accommodations also rent out scooters, whether it's that they already have them or that they know someone who will bring it right to you, which is pretty convenient. And again, you can negotiate with them. But what we found is that getting it through our accommodation was often the cheaper option rather than having to go into town and find a separate retail store that was offering the same service and it's just more convenient. So I would always recommend asking your accommodation first before you venture out to rent a scooter. The other thing to note when you're renting a scooter is to ask for an automatic or semi-automatic scooter that will make it far easier for you rather than having to shift gears with a manual scooter. But as for the roads, they're actually very well maintained and quite quiet, especially once you get out of the city. As with any other country that you're renting a scooter in, it's very important to always have your international driver's permit on you. The company that you're renting the scooter from may not ask to see it, but if you are stopped by the police, then they definitely will want to see it. And if you don't have it, you can incur heavy fines. Overall though, we found renting a scooter gave us so much freedom to explore the island at our own pace and we were able to explore many of the same places that are included on tours, but at a far cheaper price. One of the major ways to get around the Philippines is via tricycle, which is kind of like a rickshaw, but a little bit different. And it is, generally speaking, one of the most cost-effective ways to get from point A to point B. However, negotiating the price on these things can be a little bit of a minefield. So therefore, it's generally worth asking your accommodation beforehand as to what the appropriate price should be to get you from your accommodation to where you want to go. It is possible that they may even know somebody with a tricycle and they would be able to quote you potentially a better price than if you try to get it all sorted yourself. So definitely that would be what we would recommend doing first before you attempted such a thing. However, if you do want to try and chance it and negotiate a tricycle yourself, then make sure that you have agreed a price before you even get in and make sure you remember the price because we had one experience where the driver tried to change it on us before we got out. But at that point, as long as you remember the price, stick to your guns and only pay what you had agreed previously. If you arrive to the airport in Cebu and then you need to connect further on to let's say Mobile or Oslo, then you're going to need to get to the bus station. Or if you're just going to stay in Cebu City, again, you'll need to actually get from the airport into the city. And the only way to do this is by taxi. Many of the taxi companies have storefronts within the airport and they try to tell you that they have the best price. However, that's definitely not the case. Inside the airport, we were quoted the best price at 675 pesos. So we took our chance and went 
outside the airport to where there are more taxi stands. Again, the first one wanted to charge us a fixed price of 550 pesos, but we thought that that was too much. And indeed we were correct. Make sure that you go for a metered white taxi because they will be your cheapest option by far. As I mentioned, we were quoted far higher prices to get from the airport to the bus station, and we ended up paying only 327 pesos with the white meter taxi, and that was even including the fact that we had to sit in traffic for a while. So it could potentially be even cheaper than that. Basically, our advice is do not take the first price that you hear and don't trust that there aren't better options out there until you do a little bit of investigating by yourself. Now, you're probably wondering why we haven't mentioned Rideshare yet. Well, the reason for that is because technically Rideshare is available, but only in the most populated cities in the Philippines. So realistically, you can only use the likes of Grab in Cebu and Manila. I'm not sure if there are any other cities that you can use it in. I haven't heard of them personally. If you are trying to get a transfer, then do not necessarily go for a ride share as a first port of call. And equally, while there are the likes of tricycles and taxis available to you, then in order to save you a potential headache or a little bit of added stress, then it may actually be better just to contact your accommodation directly before you even arrive to see what their price would be on a transfer, because more often than not, they will be able to arrange something for you and then you get picked up and dropped off door to door. As we mentioned before, when we were talking about scooter rentals, if you're looking to do anything inland in the Philippines, I think that it's best to just rent a scooter and do it by yourself because it is more affordable and gives you more freedom time-wise to customize your own schedule rather than going on an inland tour. That all being said, I do think that if you are going island hopping, then tours are definitely worthwhile because it is crazy expensive to get a private tour or rent a boat to go island hopping yourself. I don't even know if that's safe or allowed. When you do go island hopping, you need to make sure that you have some kind of water shoe with you because a lot of the beaches as well as the snorkeling spots are quite rocky and corally and you would never want to step on coral because that is life. And some of the marine life like sea urchins and stonefish are venomous and potentially dangerous. So you really just need to protect yourself by wearing water shoes, water sandals, something that covers your feet. Aside from footwear when you're island hopping though, then generally speaking, such as snorkel masks and everything like that is already provided to you. However, it is worth noting that that is seen to be a rental rather than just part of the service. And indeed, this goes the same as if you were just independently trying to rent snorkeling equipment to go out yourself, such as in mobile for the sardine run. Bear in mind that as soon as everything has been exchanged and you have the snorkel in your hands, that is deemed to be your responsibility, not the responsibility of the company that you're renting it from. Therefore, any loss or damage is seen as your fault. And so even if you get some slightly dodgy equipment, it will be on you to replace it. So it's always a good idea before any money is exchanged or anybody's shaking hands on it, that you test out the equipment and you make sure that it's going to work for you before you seal the deal. We touched on this earlier in the video, but I think this is really important to hammer home about the island of Shargao. Make sure that you plan your transport onto and off of that island in particular in advance because the prices can be sky high. Or if you wait till last minute, you might find that things going to the island or getting you off the island are completely sold out and unavailable. So if you're looking to go to Shargao, Make sure you look into transportation well in advance and have a plan that is scheduled and booked. For anybody who is a karaoke lover, then something that you will tend to find in some of the more tourist friendly parts of the Philippines is that you will almost always be listening to somebody who is singing karaoke, whether you like it or not. A lot of bars will advertise what is known as KTV, which is literally short for karaoke TV which basically means that it's on demand, there's no specific time that it starts or ends, so you can pop in 
sing a song and come back out. The only caveat though is that generally speaking the karaoke will be open only to patrons of the establishment. So as long as you buy food or drink at that place then that will allow you to sing your little heart out for as long as you want to and then you can be done after that. If that sounds like a slightly expensive proposition then it is worth bearing in mind that in a lot of these bars happy hours are extremely common so it is worth checking that out and making sure that you plan ahead of time so that you can get the best value for money for that experience. And that's our list of tips and tricks for the Philippines. We hope that they've been helpful and that you can apply them to your future travels. That all being said, we know that this is not a complete list, so if you have any questions or if you have any recommendations, then please leave a comment below. Until next time though, take care. And keep smiling.